What is going on fellow Packer fans? It is Nick Fargo here and today I'm going to be grading our Green Bay Packers 2017 draft class. Now I would have done this earlier but I've been really busy with graduation and everything like that so I didn't have time. But now I do have time so without further ado let's get into it. So as you can see we did not have a first round pick in this draft. And that's because we decided to trade our first round pick to Cleveland in order to get the very first pick of the second round along with the very first pick of the fourth round. A lot of Packers fans, including myself, were pretty unhappy with this trade at first because we really wanted to get TJ Watt. However, the more I thought about this, the more I supported the trade because Ted Thompson realized that we have a lot of needs to fill on this team, whether it be on offense or defense. And with these picks, he was able to address every single one of those needs. He managed to address our secondary, which was 31st in the NFL. He managed to address our pass rush. He managed to get some running backs to add to the fold because I don't think that Ty Montgomery is an every down back. He also managed to get some guard competition and he also managed to address our wide receiver situation, which yes, we do have, because Jordy Nelson is 32, uh, Devontae Adams and Jeff Janis are in contract years, and Randall Cobb kind of regressed this past year before the postseason, so it will be interesting to see how he bounces back. But I feel like Ted Thompson did a really great job of addressing our needs in this draft. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through all of these players and give them a letter grade. After that, I'm going to take the average of those letter grades and basically summarize how I feel about this draft. So without further ado, let's get this going. With our first selection, we took Kevin King, the cornerback out of Washington. Now this guy is going to be a big time player for us. He checks off the size and speed combo at cornerback because he's six foot three, which makes him much taller than both Demarius Randall and Quinton Rollins, both of them being five foot eleven. And he's also fast. King ran a 4.43 40 yard dash at the combine. And after getting burned by Julio Jones in the NFC Championship last season, this size and speed will be more than a welcome addition to our secondary. King is well suited for man coverage, but is also versatile enough to play the slot. And I think we got Kevin King at very good value because I had him going to Seattle at 26. So to be able to get him at 33 proves to be pretty good value. Plus he fits a position of need. So this was a very good pick for us. I really like Kevin King and I think he's going to do great things for the Packers. I think he could stand to add a little more bulk, but not too much really. Um, I really like how he's able to uh, make the acrobatic interceptions as well. I really like that. So, with the value and position of need fit, I'm giving this pick an A. I really like this pick a lot and I really like what Ted Thompson did here. For our second pick in the second round, we took Josh Jones, the safety out of North Carolina State. And I thought that this was an excellent selection as well. Our secondary needed depth, and lots of it. Um, however, some may argue that safety wasn't a huge need for us. However, to that, I say three things. One, before this pick, our depth chart had HaHa ha Clinton Dix as the free safety, and Morgan Burnett as the strong safety. Behind those two, it was slim pickings when it came to depth. Number two, Morgan Burnett is entering his contract year, so perhaps Jones could replace Burnett after this year. Not that I would want that, because Burnett is a great player, but you never know. And number three, which I think is the most likely reason, we lost Micah Hyde in free agency to Buffalo. Hyde was a jack-of-all-trades kind of player for the Packers, and Jones has the skill set to be that kind of player as well. Again, I think that we took Josh Jones to be our replacement for Micah Hyde. Um, and we gained the services of a player who will eventually give offensive coordinators restless nights before they face him. I'm really excited about this pick. I think Josh Jones is going to do great things for us. He's a hard hitter and he's fast if you look at his 40 time. And that is why I give this pick an A, because 
we definitely needed a lot of depth in our secondary, and Ted Thompson knew that. Our third pick came in the third round at pick 93, Montrevious Adams, the defensive tackle out of Auburn. Now, there are mixed reviews on Adams due to his motor. Can our coaching staff get him to keep the light flipped on? This guy flashed dominance at times at Auburn, and he can bring it from several spots in the 3-4 scheme. But the glimpses of brilliance only made his long, quiet stretches even more frustrating, in my opinion. However, if Adams plays with the passion that he had in his senior season, then Ted's getting the player that he believes he drafted. Now, Latroy Guyon cannot stay out of trouble. In fact, he's suspended for the first four weeks. So Montrevious Adams will definitely see some time early in this season. This guy has the potential to be a really great player for us. It's just a matter of bringing it. It's a matter of unleashing that talent and being the best he can be. Now, we didn't need a defensive tackle this early, but we got him at pretty good value for the potential that he has. So, therefore, I am giving this pick a solid B. I really like this pick, even though we didn't need a defensive tackle this early, but I like the value we got him in, and he's got a really high ceiling. So, good job, Ted. Thanks for the trade with Cleveland, we acquired the first pick of the fourth round. And with that pick, we selected Vince Beagle, the linebacker out of Wisconsin. Now this was an excellent pick for the Packers because Beagle gives off that aura that he is just the type of hard-nosed linebacker that the Packers love to have on their roster. If Beagle is successful in the NFL, he'll do so by being strong on the Packers special teams, plus be a role player, but eventually become a starter within the defense when called upon. Lance Zerline of NFL.com described Beagle as a worker bee. Easy to say, the linebacker will go 100% pretty much every time he's on the field, and will be a quality edge rusher for the Packers. As for his collegiate stats, Beagle, who was named after Vince Lombardi during his senior season, totaled 44 tackles, 6 for loss, with 4 sacks, 1 forced fumble, and a pass defense. Now, I know we all wanted TJ Watt in the first round, but we're getting someone here who played alongside TJ, but has more experience at the position. Remember, TJ Watt only started one year as an outside linebacker, and Vince Beagle has much more experience at the position, and we definitely needed an edge rusher in this draft. So therefore, I am giving this pick an A, and I think this guy will be very good in the future, and he will be a quality member of the pack. With our second fourth round pick, we went with Jamal Williams, the running back out of BYU. Now, we used our first four picks on this year's draft on the defense, but with our second pick of the fourth round, we just decided to add to our lackluster running back depth. And the first of three running backs that we drafted was Jamal Williams out of BYU. And though we played all four years at BYU, Williams played in a total of 18 games his junior and senior seasons. This past year, he played in 10 games, finishing with 1,375 yards on 234 carries. He collected 12 touchdowns and even caught 7 passes for 80 yards. He should have a good chance to compete for the starting spot with Ty Montgomery. Williams fits a much needed position for the Packers, and it's said that he can run between the tackles, which would work well with the outside rushing abilities of Ty Montgomery. Now, I really like this pick. Some people say that there are some red flag character concerns, but that was just because he had a girl in his dorm room. Come on now. We really needed to add to our running back depth, so I'm giving this pick an A. I really like this guy. I like how instinctive he is when reading his blocks and I really think we got a good deal. So our next pick kind of took me by surprise since I'm an Indiana fan and alumni. We drafted D'Angelo Yancey, the wide receiver out of Purdue. Now this didn't surprise me because he isn't a good player, but he's from my rival school. Uh, playing in the Big Ten for four seasons has to help the professional progression of D'Angelo Yancey. Since he faced some tough competition in his four years against the likes of Ohio State, Michigan, Michigan State, and Wisconsin players who have been selected over the past few seasons. Yancey played in 12 games in each of the past two seasons, and this past year was his best yet with 49 receptions and 951 yards. He improved his yards per reception from 14.6 his junior season to 19.4 his senior season. Yancey finished with 10 touchdowns, which is how many he totaled his, during his first three seasons at Purdue. 
The Packers are getting a guy that's full of potential who broke out in his senior season. Mark Dulgarian uh, of NFL.com said Yancey will need to earn his keep on special teams early. That is a true statement. But if there is one team who seems to be able to find players who fit within their system, it is the Packers. It won't be a breeze for Yancey, but he's getting a good opportunity to make himself noticed by us, and he'll have to make the most of this chance. Now, we did need some wide receiver help, noting our situation earlier, so I gave this a B-. However, Yancey's got a long way to go before he's considered complete in my eyes, and that's not just that Indiana Hoosier bias. With our fifth round compensatory pick, we took Aaron Jones, the running back out of UTEP. Now, this was the second running back taken by us in the NFL draft on day three. So the Packers are seemingly going to have a big battle as to who is part of their running back depth chart next season. Jones can make big time runs and can catch the ball out of the backfield as well. Jones may not have played in the strongest conference, but if a player is good, he'll rise to the top of the depth chart. Being a player who is versatile with his speed as a runner and his abilities to catch the ball out of the backfield, with the right coaching and patience with progression, we may have found a gem with this pick, though it isn't expected that Jones will be an every down type of player. Now, this, along with the Williams pick, reminds me of 2013 when we drafted Eddie Lacy and Jonathan Franklin. Now hopefully that works out better, because Jonathan Franklin had to retire due to a neck injury and Lacy's now in Seattle. Uh, these are two different types of running backs with different skill sets that can benefit our offense very well. And I really like this pick a lot, so therefore I'm giving this an A. I really like what Ted Thompson is doing, like I've been saying. This was a really great draft. With our sixth round pick in this draft, we decided to address our guard situation with Kofi Amichia from South Florida. Now you can never have too much depth at offensive line. Amichia started 26 games at left tackle for South Florida over the last two years. He was a first-team All-AAC selection as a senior in 2016. At South Florida's Pro Day, he ran the 40-yard dash in 4.96 seconds and posted 32 reps on the bench press. He also had a 33.5-inch vertical leap and a 9-foot-6 broad jump. The Packers were in attendance for his workout. Now, this guy appears to have the required size, strength, and athleticism to handle and move inside the guard and his experience as a left tackle fits the mold of how the Packers like to draft and develop their offensive linemen. Now, we have two previously undrafted guards, Lane Taylor and Don Barclay, both of them in contract years. Jari Evans was signed, but he's more of a stopgap signing for this year, so Amicia can develop and adjust to the transition to guard for a season. Now, I like this pick. I thought we should have gotten a guard earlier, but I really do like this guy and I think he can be great. So I'm giving him a B. I, like, again, I thought we should have gotten a guard earlier, and I think we could have gotten Amicia undrafted. So I thought this was a little early, but I like the pick. With our first seventh round selection, we took Devontae Mays, the running back out of Utah State. Now, this was the third running back selected by the Packers on day three of this draft. So it's no secret that the Packers are looking everywhere to make their depth chart better at the position. Last year, the Packers battled massive injury issues at running back, and with a player like Devontae Mays, the Packers are going to see just what they have with the Utah State product. Mays has had some injury issues in the past, but his strength is hard to ignore. I mean, this guy bench-pressed 420 pounds. He'll be able to make his presence felt by the Packers. Mays will be very interesting to watch during camps. His final collegiate season was a wash with just 37 carries for 259 yards and three touchdowns due to a leg injury. When healthy on the field, he carried the ball 165 times as a junior for 966 yards and nine touchdowns. Mays has his chance as the Packers are in desperate need of having a reliable running back on their roster so there isn't a repeat of 2016. Now, I don't think that we needed to draft another running back. We got Jamal Williams and Aaron Jones. That's your one-two punch right there. And plus we have Ty Montgomery right now. So now we have four running backs on the roster right now. I suspect that one of the three running backs that we drafted are going to get cut. Or maybe we're going to keep them all in case something happens injury-wise. However, 
I think that three running backs in one draft is just too much. So I ended up giving this pick a C plus. I understand that we needed running back depth, but not to the point where we needed to draft three running backs in one draft. But I like the player when he's healthy. And with our final pick in this draft, we took Malachi Dupree, the wide receiver out of LSU. And with this pick, it's starting to look like the Packers want to incite some competition at the bottom of the wide receiver depth chart. Well, they should achieve exactly that with the selection of Malachi Dupree near the end of day three. The former LSU standout was a top recruit coming out of high school, but failed to live up to the hype for the Tigers. Although a large part of that had to do with horrific quarterback play, Dupree often appeared overmatched and seemed to struggle with the mental aspects of the game. Despite all of that, the physical traits are present with this guy. He sports exceptional size and athleticism for the position, but doesn't have the prototypical straight line speed. However, with the glimpses he's shown at LSU, it's easy to understand why Green Bay would see him as an intriguing developmental receiver with significant upside. Now, I thought this was a very good pick. In fact, I like this pick better than the Yancey pick. And that's, again, that's not just the Indiana Hoosier bias right there. I think that we might have another Donald Driver situation on our hands. This guy's drafted late, so I'm sure he has a chip on his shoulder. But I think he's going to come out and do well for us. He had very bad quarterbacks at LSU. Honestly, besides Leonard Fournette, that offense was just not that good. But I really like Malachi Dupree from the glimpses I've seen. He's shown that he can be a good wide receiver, he just has to get there mentally. So therefore, I give this pick an A-. I like this pick a lot, he's a project, but if he pans out this is going to be a home run for us for sure. Overall, I'm giving our draft an A-. minus. It's hard to hate much of what they did, especially in terms of value and the competition that Ted Thompson was able to create. A team puts together a truly great draft class when it trades down and still obtains talented prospects throughout the weekend. That's exactly what Ted Thompson was able to do in this draft. The Packers moved out of the first round when the Browns wanted to move up for David Njoku. This gave them more ammunition and Thompson took advantage of it. He began by selecting two talented defensive backs in the second round, Kevin King and Josh Jones. Both players could have gone earlier at, than they did, as they provided great value at numbers 33 and 61 respectively. Thompson then turned to his front seven next, selecting Montrevious Adams and Vince Beagle. Adams will bolster the interior pass rush, while Beagle could earn playing time as a pass rushing outside linebacker in the near future. Of the Packers' 10 picks, they scored a lot of A grades, and they didn't get anything below a C+. We also obtained tremendous value in Malachi Dupree. Overall, this was an awesome draft for the Packers, and I'm really excited to see what these rookies can do.